So you are trying to understand if you are already a brand or if any given brand it's already a brand. Today I'm going to give you five key elements which are five signs as you can, as you wish that can identify if a company, a person, it's actually a real brand. Stay tuned because I will be back in a while. This music makes me want to dance. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Marco Novo. I'm here again at 100 TV because this show is only broadcasted at 100 TV. Don't forget to subscribe, by the way. So today I'm with the second episode of The Branding Show. Hope you had a great week. Don't forget as well, use the hashtag Ask Brandin. Let me bring it to the screen so you can see it. This is the hashtag that I want you to use. If you have any question for me, if you want to talk a little bit about this, I will follow after you <laughs> to get in touch. I would love, I would love to hear from you. Don't be shy. Also, if you have any questions, if you have any recommendations, please just let me know. You can use also the same hashtag or you can just tag the 100 TV <laughs> so I can reply to you. Today, I'm going to bring this topic because this is something that people usually they tend to ask. How could I be understood as a brand? How can I think? about a company, about a professional being seen as a brand. As I said in the first episode, we could think about these two big groups of brands, corporate brand, personal brand, but the main elements, the main ingredients, they are kind of all the same. Well, of course, we have some tiny differences that uh, for instance, if something goes wrong with your corporate brand, you can make it's easier for you to adjust and to overcome. If it's with your personal brand, it's a little bit difficult because, you know, it's you all the time, so be aware of that. But the thing is, we can kind of adjust both uh, strategies, uh, tactics to uh, the same, to the dif to different perspectives, okay? But we should, you should go to the first episode to see everything I, spoke, uh, I talked about it, okay? And probably, I'm pretty sure that this will work. Also, this is not the final words about this topic, of course. You may see someone else saying different things, perfectly normal. You may see some saying uh, other things. They add more things. It's normal, okay? I'm not a owner of the truth. <laughs> so uh, this is my perspective. And I believe this is something that if you embrace, if you use this, this will work for you because it worked for me <laughs> somehow. So why did I came with these five signs? Because I kind of thought about known brands, good brands, and I thought, oh, they have all of these signs. So this could be a nice way for you to understand, A, if a brand is actually a well-worked brand, and also what you need if you didn't get all the five signs uh, covered. These are some ideas some informations that you can use for yourself. I, and again, 
for your personal brand or for your corporate brand so you can get a stronger brand. Okay, so let's move on. And the first sign is you have a promise. I think it was Seth Godin that uh, said once that, well, probably he said more than once, <laughs> that by these days, a brand is a promise. So follow my, my, my idea. Come with me. <laughs> How many times we think about, for instance, a food brand. And we know that if we go there, we have this, for instance, we have a nice meal. We don't need to wait. We will have a good time. We will think about as well the price. We will pay from this to this. Also, we expect that, for instance, the people working there will treat us in a particular way. So this is really important. So think about this. What you can keep consistent so people will be expecting that from me every time because if you follow this we know that if we go to that restaurant if we go to that hotel if we order this for instance a speaker a microphone we are waiting for this we will know that this is what we will get and this is important and that's why for instance the other day in the first episode, I mentioned the consistency, consistency as aspect of the, um, the brand, one of the main ingredients, because if we are not consistent, we won't be recognized as having a promise. Because for instance, if one day we, okay, I want to have this high priced, but suddenly, oh my, oh my God, nobody's buying from me. Let me lower the price. Let me lower the services. And we are kind of juggling with this all the time and making turns around. People won't be expecting, expecting for a promise from us. Like myself, let me give you an example. I'm not an English speaking person. I'm Portuguese, so sometimes... My English goes a little bit crazy, but this is something that probably you are expecting. So this is kind of one of my promises. I don't have an amazing English. Hopefully I will be, <laughs> I will be improving. But the thing is, one of the promises probably you are waiting for me. It's my accent. So this is something that you should be aware of. And to spot this, to understand, okay, which could be my promises, you could think those things that you can do, again, in a consistent basis, that will differentiate you from others. Okay, with this, you will get a track, an idea about which promises people can expect from you. And we can talk about delivering time. We can talk about a smile. I'm waiting, I go there, and I'm sure that I will get a smile from them, or a joke. Or you will know that the furnaces, the bathrooms, they are clean, crystal clean, and bright, and whatever. But have in mind, you should have a promise, okay? People want to expect that something is there when they think about your brand okay and with that it comes another thing that it's important the second sign it's commitment you won't get a com a, uh, <laughs> you won't get a promise if you don't commit with something like okay today i don't feel that i i want to laugh so Maybe I will put someone else working in a better mood on that place. Or at least, and this is important too, because sometimes we think that our company should be perfect. No, 
no, it doesn't need to be perfect. I don't have to be perfect. I just, and this is why it is so important self-awareness uh, sometimes and why, again, you should not promise things that you can't uh, on a regular basis and or you can't commit with. So if by any reason something which is in your promise, there's one day that you unfortunately could uh, make it. You should commit and overcome that and solve the problem made by that. Because, of course, it's good to be consistent. It's good to um, make our promises made every day. But the thing is, sometimes or eventually, there's one day, one moment that you won't be able to commit with that, but okay, not commit, uh, fulfill <laughs> that promise, but the thing is, it should commit on in overcome that and show to that person that this was not the rule, this was the exception, and you want to overcome, you want to show them, you want to show that I can commit with my promise, and with that, this is the commitment and the promise they go together hand in hand day by day so people understand that this is for sure this is something they could expect from you so you should start by the beginning of the day this is what i want to make this is what i want to accomplish i really want to fulfill and to follow my promises Okay, so have that in mind. Second, oh, third. Oh, this is going fast. <laughs> third sign, and this is something that I love to talk about because it's by these days, it's getting more and more important. And I'm talking about experience. For so many years, we heard this brand image at least here in portugal we used to talk about oh it's his brand or her brand image they kind of have they do this all the time i think these days we are talking about brand experience and this is something that some people they are not aware of this they don't follow they don't monitor this and this could be a huge mistake why Let's think about a brand, okay? For instance, your brand does online sales, but physical products which should be delivered to your customer. So they get into your website. Everything is smooth, seamlessly. They find the product they want to buy. It's an amazing product they love. It has amazing reviews. The price is nice as well easy to buy two three steps to get from the product page to the purchase uh, moment and then they are waiting for the delivery they wait and you're not the it's not your company that does the delivering you just um have another company that does the delivering because they are a shipping company. They do, they should know what they are doing. They should do this properly. So you're not in charge about the delivery and the delivery person came late instead of, for instance, three days, it took five days and he was not polite. He was not properly dressed he was rude and he threw the, <laughs> the box instead of delivering for instance uh, ringing the bell and delivering the product in hands even though this was not kind of directly related to your business this is something that goes related to the experience that the person has with your brand 
And if they do properly the work, this will be good for the experience people has with your brand. If the thing doesn't go good, this will go bad for you. And I can mention this, but you should think about every touch points someone has with your brand. Okay. As a customer, as someone that is looking, doesn't know you, but he's looking for the products, services that you're buy, selling, <laughs> not buying, selling. And so think about all the touching points they have with you. This will create the experience with your brand. It's not just because you have sell shoes and the shoes, they are really comfortable. They last forever. They shine, they look, they have an amazing design. This is good. Of course, don't get me wrong. This is important. But if for instance, someone is asking things on Facebook, Instagram, um, about how much it is, how, how long does it take to get shipped to my house and nobody it's replying. This is a not so good thing about the experience your customers or potential customers are having with your company. For instance, again, if you have uh, after sales services that doesn't work properly or it's hard to work with, or if you have not so clear return policies, this is something about your brand experience that will count as well. That's why I believe it is important to think about all of this. Again, you should think, of course, you should think about the main thing, the main product service and how this will create experience to your customers. Okay. How they will use my products so I can feel uh, how they, they will use my shoes. So they will do this, this, and this. Okay. So I need to kind of fulfill these needs. It's important. Uh, for instance, if there's, let's think about Ikea. Okay. For instance, like, the other day I bought, uh, this table, <laughs> it was this table. And one of the things is it was an assemble. So I need to assemble the table. This is a standing seated desk. And one of the things that for me, what's pretty good about this is that all the screws, they were, they came in different little bags with different numbers, the user manual and the assemblers instructions, they were pretty clear telling me, okay, you need to use these screws, which are in the bag number, whatever. Okay. So it was pretty easy for me to assemble the table, even though it, it took a little bit, <laughs> but that's the thing. But it was pretty clear for me what I needed to do, uh, which screws I need to use for this, this, and that, and which, which, what did I need to do in each given step? So this is something that by the end, the, everything came really nicely stored in the box. So this was not about the product itself. It was not related to the quality of the product. And we talk about the quality all the time, even though sometimes quality, it's, it's difficult to, to describe. So this is something that you should think about as well, but I think I will go come to this topic again in the next episode. But the thing is this company, they realized, okay, they may struggle with uh, which screw should I use here? Oh, this is, oh, maybe this is not this. No. They put it everything together in tiny plastic bags. Okay. I need to recycle, let's see, recycle them after. But the thing is, it was pretty easy for me to identify which tool and they sent the tools as well, a screwdriver and uh, whatever, uh, an exo key. But the thing is for me, it was pretty clear what I needed to do to put the table assembled. Okay. And it's right now in front of me. So this is something that you should realize as well, not just the product itself, but the whole experience, the touch points too. Okay. If they want to know more details about the product, it's, it's, it's easy for them to find them. 
or not, how easy it is to assemble, for instance, the product, to use it, okay? Are we making things easy for people? And we know that we like, most of the times, things to get go to be easy. Okay, so think about all these things. Another thing that for us, it's pretty important as customers, and we can think about this in the two perspectives, as a professional, as a company, and also as a buyer, as a customer, as a community member, as a follower, as a fan. <laughs> because we know that some customers, at some point, they, they become evangelists. And we may think why these people, they become our evangelists. And I believe that the main thing is because our brand, it's bringing value to them. They feel like this is good. This makes me feel better. Um, and also, and this is important, this is why I think that value is so important. When we wear, for instance, a shirt with a fancy logo of a known shirt brand, we are happy to, even though we are making kind of free ad for them, <laughs> the thing is we are happy. And because sometimes we, well, because one of the things is we know that people, when they look at us and they see that we are wearing this shirt, this watch, this car, well, we don't wear a car, we use it. <laughs> we drive them. <laughs> but the thing is, by using products, by using services from these companies, which have known brands and valued brands, we are getting that value too. And this is something that we should reinforce, should have in mind all the time. Because if, for instance, if we have a logo, and I'm going to talk about this in the next topic. It's the last topic about this science. About a company that nobody knows or nobody cares or it's seen as a not so good company. We tend to hide it. Okay, like this. Oh, we just turn the shirt around so nobody see it. So this is something that it's important is because another thing that we we want most of the times, I think, at least I want that, is that people looks at me and sees me like a smart person because I'm buying, I'm using um, these products. Because if I buy something, a car, that it's economic or it's safe or is... I don't want to talk about speed. <laughs> One of the things is that people, oh, Marco is he's a wise guy because he bought this car that it looks nice, but at the same time, it's safe, it's economic. So I believe that Marco is a wise guy. And we want, I believe we want this. We want to be recognized as, as good as wise, as smart, as friendly, whatever, these kind of things. And if a brand builds, builds this identity that and these values, these characteristics, when people buy from them, they will be seen as, this is kind of like contagious. Okay, so that's why it's important for you to think about value. And at the same time, on your side, as a company, you will understand that when we bring value to the table, we will get more money as well. Our company will be more profitable, okay? Because people will be willing to pay you more for what you're giving to them. Because besides the product itself, you are bringing them value okay so this is so important 
This is why it is so important for you to think about which value or values am I giving to people which are using, trying, eating <laughs> the products, services that I'm selling. So have that in mind as well. And the last and not the least, because this is important too, because we need these signs as well, are the identity elements. And when I talk about identity elements, I can talk, for instance, about colors, about um, sentences, about a logo, about a other kind of visual uh, elements. We may talk about, for instance, physical things, furniture, whatever. Because, for instance, if I say, just do it, I'm probably sure that you already know which brand I'm talking about. If I make this, probably you may know that I'm talking about Harley Davidson. Okay. If, uh, let me think about it. Okay. <laughs> I will get to this a little bit later if I remind something. But the thing is, this, and again, this is why it is, it is important to be consistent and coherent. Let me see how, how we say this. Coherent. Okay. Because this is the way to bring these identity elements that will make a difference from us to our competitors. Okay, because this is so important. Let me think if I, oh, okay, for instance, if I share this little duck, probably you already know which brand I'm talking about. And if you are in the live streaming world, I'm pretty sure that you know it. So this is why it is important. For, oh, 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 not a good way to, sh to be on the screen. So that's why, for instance, it's important to come up with um, merchandise, with repeating the slogan, with getting a nice logo. And again, don't make this, this is important because sometimes there's this misconception between a logo and a brand. A brand, it's not a logo, a logo is not a brand, okay? A logo, it's part of a brand. It's after you become a brand, and that's why, for instance, I came with this identity elements. Once you become a brand, your logo will be seen as, oh, this brand is this, this, and this. But after, before that, your logo means probably nothing. Okay. So that's why it is important to be consistent, to have clear which elements I want to be seen as my brand elements okay a slogan the name of the brand a sound a music a color whatever okay so these were the five signs i want to bring you today to understand to spot a real brand as usual <laughs> as the first episode today i'm bringing another book 8020 sales and marketing by perry marshall why do I love this book? I read it um, some years ago. But for me, this is kind of a, um, a working book because there's still Pareto's law, which is the 80-20 that represents that, for instance, 20% of our customers, they represent 80% of our income. 20% of our products, they represent 80% of your income. So this is why it is so important to spot this as well, which products they are the most effective for us. Also, which customers they are more effective for us so we can understand which we can, what can we make more, how we can serve these people even more. Okay. So this was the second episode of the branding show here at 100 TV. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.